Okay, in this afternoon session, I'm just going to speak for a few minutes about another aspect of experience, uh, and then we'll we'll meditate and um, explore that aspect a little bit, and then, uh, yeah, in a way, um, go into a type of meta practice, sort of awareness meta practice or receptive meta practice so we'll do that and then we'll probably just have a bit of time at the end um, have a, a little standing break and then you can either continue standing or um, find a different posture to to end the session so it'll lar largely be us practicing together um, so uh, yeah what I want to talk about um, is the the mood in the mind so it's not something that, as far as I know, has a Pali name. Um, it's it's to, to some extent what I've been calling calling the the feeling in the mind, uh, how 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 the mind feels. Um, but the mood in the mind is a, is another way of of talking about it. And and if you like, it it it's somewhere in the territory between uh, feeling tone, Vedana as feeling tone and a full-blown emotion which has um it's quite a complex creation of thoughts and images and body sensations feelings coming together um and if you like we could say that the we're um in touch with the mood in the mind um when we cultivate the four qualities of right mindfulness that we've been doing all week but i particularly talked about at the beginning of the week so that sense of of, of sati being present um, clearly knowing qualities of interest and curiosity of uh, right energy right effort and the mind that's free from desires and discontent um, so there's a quality of contentment or acceptance with with what's present that that quality arises um, so we could say that that's a particular mood of the mind and that's the mood of the mind that if you like we're looking to encourage and to to cultivate and and other things can if you like augment or support that mind uh, qualities like patience qualities uh, uh, like meta or other other things that are also in the mind at the the same time this quality of sati uh, i don't know who said this uh, uh, but uh, apparently sati plays well with others it's one of those children that plays well with others uh, so um yeah and it's never in the mind on its own so there are always other qualities in the mind with with sati with present moment um, mindfulness but there can be many other moods to the mind um, and often they're quite habitual so um, we can just tune in just tune into what's the mood in the mind at the moment what's its coloring what's a sort of tinge to um, yeah to its subtleties mind moods Sometimes I talk about it as as the wallpaper of the mind. So it's 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 like this this room that yeah you go into and maybe you've gone into it many times before. Um, and perhaps it's got a wallpaper on it that you don't particularly like, or you didn't like it in the beginning, but now you don't really notice it because it's been there so long. <laughs> um, so that could, that's what can happen with with moods. I think we can not really be aware because they feel so. Um, they, we feel very at home in them. Um, and they, again, Analia has this lovely phrase. Uh, oh, I think it's he quotes anyway. Um, this phrase of, of of when when we feel comfortable, when something's important to us, we make a nest of it. So maybe our, our wallpaper is something that we've made a bit of a. It's just there, you just don't really notice it anymore. But 
but you can it is possible to mistake it for awareness we think oh i'm, I'm present i'm there um and so because we're so used to it so so habitual and quite subtle we don't necessarily see the hindrances or the the clashes that are um in that particular mind or mood so i'll i'll just give you a couple of examples that i've i've worked with and um, some more general examples um, so so one for me that i used to work with quite a bit uh is, is what i call my burdened mind and so that was the mood in the mind it was it was slightly uh, averse just very slightly aversive in that it felt a bit resistant to um doing stuff it felt a, a bit um heavy or a bit uh, oh no not another thing to do that was the attitude it was oh no not more to do leave me alone <laughs> it's that sort of mood uh, so i call it my burdened mood uh and each time i became aware of it i i, I came to see that actually it was there quite regularly it was a quite a habitual mood but it didn't feel you know it didn't feel bad it didn't feel that noticeable and until i clocked it uh named it which actually was quite helpful in this case and then i started to notice it more and more um and through the noticing of it and being able to identify different things about this this mood gradually it lifted until yeah it's it's not something that i've experienced in in very you know very regularly uh in in a long time actually now um sometimes moods change and uh, just just recently i've i've been noticing how um you know i'm so I was just just thinking now you know maybe this this mood has sort of transmogrified or something from from a slightly burdened mind to um uh yeah the mind that feels tired sometimes i think why 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 what's happening why am i tired i'm reasonably well rested um on retreat blah blah um so in a way it started again it, it, with another exploration of uh what's what's the mood around um feeling tired what what is that like and uh can i just be with it can i be aware of it rather than just uh, take myself off to bed for another nap or um you know act on that but just just have some curiosity about what's what's going on just through this little little mood the little indications yeah something else i think we can um notice particularly in relation to awareness it is um because it's it, it can masquerade a bit as awareness and that's the hyper vigilant mind a mind that slightly jumps on experience um, is driven a little bit by anxiety or the desire to get it right um, it doesn't have the spaciousness and openness of awareness so there can be that sort of mood in the mind and yeah perhaps at times we mistake that for for awareness but again it can can be investigated yeah in the sense of observing uh, and noticing what's happening in that mind rather than um either not noticing it or quite quickly making up our mind oh, oh this is what it is it's tiredness i better remedy that in some way it's like yeah maybe maybe but maybe um not do not do that w without any um curiosity about what's happening i think quite often we can go around with an okay mind the mind is okay uh, but actually if we think about the qualities of awareness they can add up to something more than an okay mind 
um, and in a way that they, they represent um, mindfulness as a um, as a as a basis for the growth of wisdom so it's really important actually that we don't settle or think oh it doesn't really matter the mind's okay that's that sort of um that, that that's that's good enough um important to ex to accept that might be how it is in the moment and yet um being curious uh you, we, one can never go wrong actually being curious about uh oh there's a view that this is okay and that's that's enough oh let's see um Bhante, uh i can't remember where he said this but he he said possibly in living with awareness he says um with a little bit of effort our state of mind our state of consciousness can be significantly raised i don't really know how he meant us to do that um what that little bit of effort looked like i can't remember the context but i think this type of being willing to um notice not sort of skipping over what's happening and think oh well it's not it's okay it doesn't matter that much um, but being willing to just just uh, in a way look around us look, look at look at the walls look at the wallpaper and say all oh, right i i remember remember what you're like and uh yeah this i know this about you and um yeah having that sort of approach and sometimes you might be able to just feel the effect that that has on the mind you might be able to feel that consciousness raising effect through being present taking that little bit of interest being curious about subtleties in the mind and particularly as the, the more the retreat goes on the more those subtleties become accessible to us if if we're open to them some of the subtle states uh, are, are not are ones that we might discount might not, not think well that's not really worth paying attention to uh, and i'm thinking of things like like boredom or dullness in the mind uh, the mind that's not really engaged and they are brilliant, brilliant things to pay attention to. And they may be coloring uh, your walls. Uh, so have a look, have a look at what, uh, what's on the walls and, and you know, what does boredom feel like in the mind? What, what is its quality? What coloring is it? Uh, is it a sort of gray? Uh, maybe it's got a pale sort of subtle flowery sort of pattern to it. Um, easy it's just easy to make assumptions about uh things that yeah we we don't find particularly striking or particularly um we're not particularly drawn to um, but yeah there's a lot of potential in recognizing subtlety and there's potential in in those subtle things helping to grow awareness helping awareness be um stronger okay so that's that's all i'll say so if you'd like to um find a posture that's comfortable for you that supports awareness
start by tuning into tuning into yourself perhaps starting with tactile sensations in the body but taking time to to come to your experience might be that your attention goes somewhere else to particular sounds particular sights and you can trust in the process awareness following attention wending your way into your own being just sitting just lying and just being within that process of settling, relaxing back into awareness. Tune into the current mood in the mind. You don't need necessarily to name it, but just feel into it. Don't feel you have to stay with it if other things pull your attention. But every now and again, come back to it. There's perhaps a particular location in the body where you have a sense of that mood. Maybe around the heart or the belly, or perhaps it's quite free floating. And let the mind stay quite open. Sometimes trying a bit too hard can bring its own mood, the mood of doubt, of wondering if we've got it right. No getting it right.
relaxing again and again into the moment. Into the mood of the moment. Perhaps the mood or the feeling in the mind is quite clear, soft, clear, simple. Perhaps there's some delight or playfulness. Perhaps there's the mood of your favorite color running through you. Or some of the qualities of right mindfulness. Letting awareness recognize whatever is there to be known. Are there any particular thoughts associated with the mood in the mind? Or any sense of contraction or expansion in the body? These two can be known. Sometimes the moods will be 
pleasant in its overall tone. And we can notice that. Notice what pleasure feels like in the mind and in the body. Other times the mood may, may be a little unpleasant. Perhaps connected with a thought or a, a different sense. And that too can be known in awareness. What does unpleasant feel like? We're going to move now into encouraging the mood of matter. Growing the mood of receptive metaphor awareness. Just sitting here with whatever's happening, opening to life. Life happening moment to moment. Connecting with however you are, with a sense of acceptance and allowing. Acceptance of how you are in this moment. And that's a naturally kind response to whatever is happening. How is it to feel that acceptance of what's happening right here and to feel that in this moment that's enough?
keeping in touch with that sense of being on our own side. Welcoming what we are in the moment. Open up to the possibility of another being in your mind, in your memory or imagination. joining you, keeping you company. And in this, this second stage, relaxing and relating to the pleasure of this being. Enjoy and appreciate relaxing and opening together. Perhaps there's a sense of that reciprocal flow of love, flow of connection from the little exercise we did this morning. And we simply open up to that. In the third stage, how do we relate to neutral in our own being and in the being of another? Perhaps a being comes to mind. Noticing whatever responses we have. Neutrality can have quite a subtle flavor. Flavor of peacefulness or subtle ease quietness. Undemanding. The gift of allowing us 
space. Neutrality can also encourage us to look at our relationship to boredom, lack of engagement, really open with interest to these qualities. Much more the quality of our own minds than to do with anyone else. And in the fourth stage, notice how we relate to the difficult within ourselves. Notice what comes up, who comes up. And the feelings of hurt or feeling misunderstood or ignored, judged. How do we hold the unpleasant in awareness? kindly, spacious awareness of ourselves and another. Trust that we are being with difficulty, doing the best that we can. Opening with awareness to others and to ourselves.
in the fifth stage. Any thought, any feeling, any mood or emotion can arise in any mind at any time. And we can encourage and grow the moods of mindfulness and the moods of loving kindness. We all have heart minds that judge, compare, block, as well as minds that love, give generously, wish to be happy. Kindness is available to us. Awareness too is available. And perhaps allowing them to move through us in the same way as favorite color. Move through and beyond us. You can stay sitting if you like, or just take a couple of minutes to stretch your legs.
So you can stay standing for the next 10 minutes if you'd like to, or change your posture. We'll just have an open practice for 10 minutes and before it starts, I'll read something from Sharon Salzberg. Once when I was sitting with Upandita, I began to notice a recurring pattern in our interviews. Whenever I told him about a meditation experience that I thought was wonderful and impressive, his response was, did you note it? In his tradition of practice, noting refers to placing a mental label on each experience so as to know it more directly. But I would sit there and think, what does he mean? Did you note it? It was glorious. How could I have just noted it like everything else? Other times I went to see him with doleful accounts of painful meditation experiences. He looked at me each time and said, did you note it? I would think, what do you mean? Did you note it? It was awful. Can't he understand that? It took a while for me to appreciate the simplicity and importance of his approach. He was asking me if I had been aware of each experience with spaciousness and clarity of mind. He was far less concerned with what was happening than with the quality of awareness I was bringing to it. What we want in practice is to understand the nature of our lives. And this does not demand a particular experience, but a quality of awareness that excludes nothing.
we'll leave this session we'll leave the session there and uh yeah hopefully see you at eight o'clock uh with a buddha puja drawn from the dharmapada um yeah mm-hmm.